Hello, digital card fighters. This is Kyle D, better known as Ride My Avatar, bringing you Card Fight Vanguard Zero content. Today's Card Fight Vanguard Zero deck profile revolves around the Great Nature deck profile, which recently got support in the recent set. And it is Polaris is the new ace of the deck, creating multiple attack lines and multiple power lines. So, Without further ado, let's go over the deck and we'll take it into the ladder and hopefully we take it and take the ladder down by storm. So, first off, let's go over the deck's primary win cons and what it can do. My build is slightly different than most probably would say, even our good friend True Champ definitely does not play this build like I do. So let's, without further ado, let's go on with it. So, first off, our starter relates around the fact that we have Black Borg Parrot is still the same starter because being able to draw on a retire is just so good. Next, I run the chicken. The vocal chicken is just because a unit that you can retire to get into a grade two just helps so much. It's not even funny. Being the heel trigger definitely helps. If I'm going to draw my heels, I'm going to have to have it useful, right? Next, I run Battler of the Twin Brush Polaris. I think adding him as a stan and then having his restand ability is still very high functional and high valuable. So, limit break when this unit attacks a Vanguard Counterblast to stand one of your rear guards to have a gain 4,000 until the end of turn. Retire that unit at the end of turn. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, it gets plus 3,000 until the end of turn. So it becomes a 14k beater and it restands. Not bad. Next, we have Dumbbell Kangaroo as a mini on, if you're not limit breaked, chance to be able to do it early is a good incentive to run it. I run it as a draw. Next, you run three Skull Hunt, School Hunter Leopold. Makes Counterblast to have one of your rear guards gain the following ability until the end of turn. When this unit is retired, call it to the same slot. It's there not because of this ability, because you do not want to ride him very often. You can ride him first, but then you want to be on Polaris the next turn just to close out the gap. So when this unit attacks, you may have one of your rear guards gain 4,000 until the end of turn. Because Leopold be able to add 4,000 thousand to one of your units it makes crazy power numbers especially restanding with players giving 8k now that's a total of 8k coming in or maybe even hitting a stand on to leopold reswing in that's a 12k added boost onto whatever unit especially seeing as you'll be using the chicken as the target making it 22 very powerful next here is the cat which goes into recorder dog if it's retired next is our limit break enabler because you want to have limit break enabler because if you can open this early enough you will be able to get um polaris skill off faster and especially if your opponent limit breaks denies you you want to be able to do that so you have binoculus tiger when this unit attacks you may have one of your other rear guards gain 4000 until the end of turn retire that unit at the end of turn so he's similar to leopold skill that's why we run them and then we run Lamp Camel because drawing added cards does help because we're not thinning as much. But I like having Lamp Camel as an on hit draw two, j draw one. It's just so fantastic. Then I run Sloth Tank because we are using so much of our counter blasts. A counter charger definitely helps. You could definitely run the Platabills and I mean the. What are they? The Hamskay line here, if you like. If you choose to, then you have a better option. But I definitely recommend running the Limit Break Enablers on the Grade 1 line, just so you have 5. I think 5 is a fantastic number. Any deck that revolves around Limit Break is just very useful. Next, I have the Recorder Dog, just in case you have to use your um, Cat to be retired early, if you want to push early. So you can grab a Grade 1 booster, it just helps. And then we have um, Coiling Duckbill, just because Coiling Duckbill is God and Saint. And being able to draw a card is just fantastic. And then we have PGs, of course. So with that, we're going to confirm our deck and we're going to take it into the ladder and hope... Oh, wait, we are not in the ladder. <laughs> Give me a sec. We're going to cancel, close, and go right into the ladder. Give me a sec. Hey, River, guys.
remember guys to like comment and subscribe on this video it really helps me a lot it especially gets the video going to many other viewers that might be able to gain help from the knowledge i am providing so without further ado maybe if i click the right thing <laughs> let's get into the first match shall we if it's a vp farmer we're not going to go too far but if it's not we'll use this video so with that finally we get into it after three tries of being a dodo let's go so with it leopold's this deck is just very powerful in itself being able to in this meta be able to get two attacks in on your opponent is so important that's why a lot of the top tier decks handle it well so we're going to be facing off against shadow paladins this might be a tricky matchup in general general because of the fact that shadow paladins definitely have a retirement game that we do not want to come across too early so right now we're kind of in not a good spot if we don't draw into our grade ones i don't want to ride a pg against shadow paladins because the fact is they do a lot of damage is my opponent vp farming we might have a material farmer nope there is blaster javelin with blaster javelins help it'll definitely progress but being what i put back because we had the polaris and we had the camel definitely helped our grade up lineup ouch cool half our deck is right here well we're gonna have to work with it so first off we'll swing in we'll probably take some points of damage here we have to play the long game in this situation just because Shadows do have the ability to crit early, especially seeing as it is a Spectral Duke variant. So, we're going to have to see what they do. Definitely fibbing about VP farming definitely helps because it makes them question. That's why I do it sometimes to psych out my opponents. Maybe they might listen. But they are riding Blaster Dock, an SP one at that. You guys, remember to get your shadow material up because you get spirit and you get the loveliness of Blaster Blade spirit as well. So make sure you get your Royal Paladin material for next set because it is a double. It is a double R, so it will be costly to make. Draw us our card for turn. Oh my goodness. It wasn't for the fact that I don't want to retire anything right now. This would be a different fight. So we're going to swing in, get rid of his javelin to force out more uniqueness, shall we say? Oh my goodness. That draw trigger would have been fantastic. Let's see what we would have gotten. No, we're not going to invoke. Oh, we would have got another PG. Dang. At least he doesn't heal, which is very beneficial for us. Okay. Blast... Stir Dragon, PBD. Peanut Butter Dragon is out on the for field. So he's going to do one of two things here. He might call a board. Ooh, that 12K is going to be a pain in the rear to take down. Fantastic. I was not wanting to deal with a 12K right now. We hit a draw trigger that might not. Ooh, we got a grade one. Okay. You don't have to worry too much. Seeing as he runs crits, he needs to build better walls. And since he brought us up to limit break five, he doesn't know what he just got himself into here. So we're going to ride our Polaris.
call. Call. And call the camera. What sucks is we have to give up the booster to do this. And our restand just kind of fizzles. Ever so slightly. But it all really depends on what our trigger checks reveal. So first off, we are going to restand the chicken. I'm giving it 14. I mean, it doesn't help in the slightest, but a couple triggers could definitely benefit us. Or even a stand trigger right now would be crucial. But we do not get one. And he hits a defensive draw. Dude is very lucky on his trigger checks, but that is fine. We will lose the bird. And then we get... The reason why I did this was to be able to survive an extra turn because his hand isn't crazily overpowered, but the fact is he has been hitting his defensive triggers. We haven't been able to push. So if he calls one more unit down, retires them to gain the extra crit, that would be very beneficial for us. So counter blast, discard, draw two. So to him, that means he's got a couple defensives here. We're kind of in a bad spot because of the fact is we have to definitely push some damage here. So 9k goes in. He's not pushing for the extra damage, which is weird. I mean, we still got... It sucks because we couldn't push more damage. He ate RPG. Dang it. So he took the PG on us. We have two more heals. That ain't gonna kill us. But the fact is, we're kind of not in a good spot. Okay, that made it tend to proceed to main phase. We actually could do something here. At least we guaranteed the hit. Oh, I can't restand at all. And I can't even gain a value off the retirement of the chicken. Sometimes that's just what happens, boys and girls. Ooh, but we do hit the heal, which is very clutch. Maybe we might get lucky and hit a stand trigger. Nope. Double heal trigger, though. We will take that. We take those. Now our opponent has to work extra hard to beat us. That's actually really good in our favor right now. We're out of heals, but we won't die next turn. So they have to really push hard this turn. But seeing as he's going to give me Counter Blast to work with, it's not looking in his favor right now. Great. Oh, doesn't activate the effect. Very interesting. Does he really believe he can survive three, three attacks? Well, two are going to be trigger-related, so. Oh, he's damage-denying me. Got it. So, mm, th this is not looking good. So, we're going to take out these two and then swing in for one. And reasons for that is to hopefully hit a trigger. 
we hit a stand trigger, we can definitely rip out a PG this turn. Nope. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. You know what? Instead of bringing to five, I'm going to take out a unit so that if you call down one more to do your shenanigans, we'll definitely have options. Hey, look, there's the sloth I needed. Hopefully we don't die. He's gone through a decent amount of triggers, and that's like our biggest thing we have to worry about. Okay. He's really risking it all here. Or he's got enough PGs to keep me at bay. One of the two. Nope. We lose. Well, that's what this deck can do. It just... My opponent was definitely hitting a lot of his trigger checks. And we didn't hit enough of ours. So, we lost. But that's fine. Definitely, guys... This was a good fight, and I think this was a great video. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.